Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where finally we find out which tofu quagglant is the best. I know you've been eagerly waiting for this tofu making extravaganza, so let's get right into making six different blocks of tofu with six different coagulants. From the traditional gypsum and nigari to stuff you can get at the supermarket. However, before we unleash the coagulant chaos, we need to start with the ever humble, ever noble soybean. And make fresh protein rich soy milk starting with 500 grams of beans at a time. This will be enough for our first two blocks. Now we have just over two liters of raw soy milk to cook. Usually I don't skim off the foam, but since this is an extra large batch of soy milk, let's reduce the chance of calamity by doing this quick step. Then we'll want to bring it to a boil and watch it like a hawk. And be ready to lift the pot immediately if things start to bubble up. Soy milk is a formidable beast that just loves to keep us on our toes. Turn the heat to low and control it so the soy milk simmers ever so gently for 10 minutes. Afterwards, we have just under two liters of deliciously fragrant soy milk. Let's measure it exactly and divide it into two equal portions to put our two traditional coagulants to the test. Gypsum versus Nagari. Gypsum, aka calcium sulfate, is a naturally occurring common mineral that's been used for tofu making for thousands of years. Most tofu I see in the stores nowadays is also made with it. Nagari is made from seawater. After sea salt is removed, the bitter brine left over contains mostly magnesium sulfate and some other trace minerals, and that is this liquid nagari. I'll heat the soy milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a bit hotter than my target coagulation temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, because as I slowly stir in each coagulant, the temperature will fall. As I see some curds already forming, I can stop stirring. We can already see them start out just a little bit differently, but how will they end up? We'll find out after we cover the pot and set a timer for 15 minutes. This intermission would be a great time to clean up. One of my goals this year is to clean as I go more consistently, which is a bit more fun when you have cute cleaning supplies, especially cute cleaning supplies that help with my other goal of fully ditching single-use plastics, like today's sponsor, Blue Land. I started with their clean essentials kit a few months ago. You just fill the containers with warm water, and the cleaners and soap come in these little tablets, drop one in and it makes itself. And you know how I love things that make themselves. The ingredients are vegan friendly and hypoallergenic. Basically, it has the stuff we do want, not the stuff we and the planet do not want. Once dissolved, pop on the top and away you go. They all smell so good, but in a light and fresh way, not heavy. Most importantly, they're effective. I've been impressed, but my number one go-to is the Fresh Lemony Multi-Surface Cleaner. True to the name, I'm using it everywhere all the time, so I'll want to order my refills pretty soon. Good thing Blueland's sharing a special offer just for my viewers. Mosey on over to the top link in the video description to get 15% off your first kit. Click through that and they will automatically give you the discount on checkout. Thanks to Blueland for supporting the channel and for helping us reduce on single-use plastic and generally making cleaning so much more enjoyable. You know what else is enjoyable? Fresh soy curds. Remember, this one is made with gypsum and the other is nagari, calcium sulfate versus magnesium sulfate, mainly magnesium sulfate. They look almost the same. The shape and the sides of the curds are very similar. They are both smooth. They jiggle with the same jiggliness. But how's the taste? 
The chips in one is very bland, which for tofu, I think is a good thing. The nigari one is bitter, though I expected that. Nigari, of course, comes from the Japanese word for bitter. But things will change after we press them. So let's get the presses ready. Line with cheesecloth, fill them up. Even things out as we can. Wrap. And add the lid. These lids have a spring which loads pressure from the top. And I could twist it as well to add more pressure. However, for today's tests, I will not turn them at all. Just pour off the excess liquid, aka soy whey. Then they'll go in the fridge overnight to chill completely. Later, I'll soak some more beans for the next fruity round, comparing the powers of lemon juice and apple cider vinegar. But first, it's actually the next day, and our soy tofu made with gypsum and nagari are ready to reveal. No real difference in appearance. Overall, they are quite firm. Let's slice them. And the cross section looks basically the same. Wasn't this anticlimactic? You can see the outline of the curds, very little space in between, so it looks quite smooth. Rather looking like a firm white cheese, but bouncy. What if we break it? The curds look pretty much the same. What if we taste it? The tofu with gypsum, it's good. It has a mild tofu flavor. It's kind of leaning on the savory side. Very pleasant, great texture. I could actually eat it plain. The tofu with nagari. I would not eat it plain. I'd want to cover up this taste with a sauce or something. It has a slight off taste to me. Almost like metallic, but not quite. Almost sour, but not sour. Not bitter though, which is great. Regardless, we have more tofu to make, so for now I'll store these in water to keep them fresh. By the way, if you're not eating your homemade tofu right away, you do want to change the water like every day, and this will keep it freshest. It can even last for up to seven days. Any longer than that, and you're playing with fire, my friend. Regardless, we're gonna make another batch of soy milk the same exact way as before. For this fruity encounter, I'm mixing up two coagulant solutions. To one, I'll add one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. You might recognize this from my original tofu making video from a decade ago. If you do, you're the real OG. With a half cup of room temperature water. Then to the other, one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and the water. Then we'll heat up the soy milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit and stir in each solution. Let's cover and wait 15 minutes. Afterwards, they are both very well coagulated. Let's taste the fresh curds. The lemon is lemony. The curds are soft and the flavor is actually pretty good. The apple cider vinegar is kind of what you would expect. That, there's that signature fermented apple sourness that is definitely there. The curds have slightly more bite to them, like it sticks to your teeth a little more. Let's press them. After an overnight chill, let's compare. almost exactly like their predecessors. They're both firm and bouncy. So far, I'm surprised by how similar they are. It seems like this texture is really created by the exact temperature, environment, or stirring method used, or all of the above, rather than the coagulants themselves. Whether we're using a mineral salt or acid, it seems to come out the same. However, what about the taste? The lemon flavor is gone. It has disappeared. Surely there is a little bit of brightness, but not a distinct lemon flavor. The apple cider vinegar tofu is also not sour at all. 
but it does have that hint of fermented apple flavor. It might be good for making a tofu cheesecake, or maybe a savory dish that would be enhanced with a fruity flavor like ginger fried tofu, for instance. Something like that. This time, I did not forget to weigh them. The lemon is actually smaller by 31 grams. That's interesting. Maybe we could have used a little more lemon or a little more heat. Maybe there was actually more protein in there to extract. Or maybe one spring lid applies just a touch more pressure than the other, or a combination of the factors. I guess we won't find out today. Though by the way, I went back and weighed the gypsum and nagari tofu, even though they were already soaking in water overnight, so they're a little bit heavier now than when they went in. But there's a 32 gram difference. I really think now that it could just be one spring is more worn out than the other, so the pressure was slightly different. I don't know. Lots of nitty gritty to get into if we wanted to. But I don't have time. We need to test out two more coagulants. One is Epsom salts. This one you guys asked me about a few times, but it did take me a little bit of time to find Epsom salts without fragrances and without the external use only label. And our final contender is white vinegar because it's cheaper than the apple cider kind. Let's see how it goes with another round of fresh soy milk. salt curds, I expected bitterness, but it's sweet in a strange and unpleasant way. Like my body is truly rejecting it. The white vinegar soy curds are surprisingly plain. There's a hint of vinegar, but it's really not sour. Let's press them. And the next day, I am so excited, aren't you? Please let me know if you're enjoying this video so far. Give it a thumbs up, maybe. Again, the appearance is very similar to the others. It's practically indistinguishable. The slice looks the same again. I'm thinking we should try out different stirring methods for the coagulant another time. There's a pouring method I've seen, and I wonder. But first, let's taste this. With great relief, I am happy to report that the Epsom salt tofu is not weird. It is still slightly sweet though, which is slightly off-putting. However, the chew is tender and the curds seem finer than the acid tofus. The white vinegar tofu, just like our other vinegar tofu, is not sour at all. Though yes, there is a slight vinegar flavor, it's much less obvious than with the apple cider version. The texture, however, is next level. It's more meaty. The curds feel more substantial, a bit more stick to your teeth, but in not in that bad melted cheese kind of way, more in a satisfying kind of way. So, which is the best? I have to say, all of them! I think this shows it doesn't matter which of the six coagulants you choose. They all make really great tofu, so long as you follow a good process. I don't know about you, but making my own tofu, choosing the ingredients that go into them and ditching the single-use plastic containers is so much more satisfying. Satisfying like how it is to use my Blue Land cleaners. <laughs> Thanks again to Blue Land for sponsoring today's long tofu testing adventure. Don't forget to use my link to get 15% off your first purchase. And thank you for watching all the way to the end. You're the real MVP. May your tofu making endeavors be as thrilling as this video, and here's to your best year of tofu making ever. Here's to our best year of tofu making. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what you would do with six blocks of fresh homemade tofu. I better get cooking, so bye for now.